response to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. The league has put out a statement just after 10 o'clock Eastern time, which includes the information that he is in critical condition. Here's a look at the ambulance transporting him there from the stadium in Cincinnati to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Here is that statement from the National Football League once again. Tonight's Buffalo Bills Cincinnati Bengals game has been postponed after Buffalo Bills Damar Hamlin collapsed. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell announced. Hamlin received immediate medical attention on the field by team and independent medical staff and local paramedics. He was then transported to a local hospital where he is in critical condition. Our thoughts are with Damar and the Buffalo Bills. We will provide more information as it becomes available. The NFL has been in constant communication with the NFL Players Association, which is in agreement with postponing this game. Adam Schefter joins us at this hour, just after 11 o'clock Eastern time. And Adam, this is a, a night unlike any uh, we've seen. Uh, and uh, at this hour, we have the most recent uh, updates as far as the medical condition is, is concerned. Uh, what can you share in terms of how this, how the decision was, was reached? Because initially it appeared that there was going to be some attempt to continue to play this game. I thought it was evident based on both the coaches and players on both sides. There's no way they're playing this game. Regardless, this decision just after 10 o'clock and the statement was, was announced. How was the league trying to process this and figure out what best to do? Well, Scott, there were little hints that we saw throughout the course of the evening once these tragic events began to unfold. And initially there was an announcement that game could resume a short time later when it became apparent to a lot of people that there was no way that they were going to be able to play this game. Later on, you saw the NFL executive, Donna Ponte, gathered in the tunnel with two voices of reason, I would imagine, the Buffalo Bills head coach, Sean McDermott, and the Cincinnati Bengals head coach, Zach Taylor. They continued to exchange the phone, which I presume was connected to the league office on Park Avenue, where they reached the decision obviously, rightfully, logically, to postpone this game where nothing mattered until we had an update on the condition of the Buffalo Bills safety, DeMar Hamlin. And a short time after that, the NFL released a statement in which it said that DeMar Hamlin is in the hospital and he's in critical condition. And really, Scott, that's all that anybody cares about right now Agree, Mar Hamlin, and how is he doing? And what we know is that he was taken to the hospital. His mother was with him. We've seen videos of his mother on social media. And right now, essentially, he's in the hospital. He's in critical condition. There has been an outpouring of support across social media in the day and age that we're living in. This is how people weigh in and express their thoughts. You see a post from the Buffalo Bills about all the prayers from DeMar Hamlin. If you take a look in that post, it seems as if every team in the National Football League and every player in the National Football League has posted at some point in time thoughts and prayers for DeMar Hamlin, which is why essentially they couldn't play this game and it was never realistic to be able to play this game. And it took them forever how long to figure that out that they couldn't play this game. But there's no way that players... Having seen what they did, having reacted the way they did, could go out there and compete on a playing field until they had an update on the condition of their brother. That was really the most important thing. And right now he's at the hospital, and you just hope and pray um, that he's got the best medical care there that he can possibly get, and that they'll be able to take the best possible care of him. Agreed, and as we've said since we came on the air, all that any of us can do, and I feel like anyone who's been watching that's human, I don't care what your, mm -hmm. your religious inclinations are, but if you believe in such a thing, then you folks have been lifting him up in prayer and continue to do so. Um, Adam, you know, there, there are other things to talk about, like the game and all the rest of it, and I, I, I don't know when anybody figures that out. I, I mean, it doesn't matter right now. At some yeah. point it will, and I don't know how or when those determinations get made even with an update about yeah. the condition of the play. I just, I can't fathom how, yeah. like, I don't know what you do here. Yeah. You, you, you can't fathom, and you shouldn't fathom, and it shouldn't really matter right now, because essentially, again, it's about him. And, Scott, from the moment you went down, you knew that this was a different type 
of situation yep. that we're used to seeing on the football field. You saw the reaction of all the Buffalo Bills players. You saw the tears. You saw people holding their faces, turning away. They couldn't bear to watch it. You see an ambulance come onto the field. Now, there have been incidents in the past where we've seen ambulances come onto the field. But it is certainly not a common occurrence. It's certainly not one that we're used to seeing with any degree of regularity. And when you see something like that happen, it does not take but a moment to recognize the severity of the situation and the type of situation that we're dealing with. You see Stefan Diggs with tears coming down his cheeks, rolling down there. And again, it becomes something where everybody's waiting for the sporting event to where it becomes this enormous news story, national news story that everybody is tuned into and everybody wants an update on. Look, uh, me, Booger McFarland, Susie Carver, we're sitting up here hoping and praying for the young man like everybody else. And the phone keeps buzzing with doctors sending updates. Everybody becomes a doctor. Everybody's right. diagnosing him. Yeah. Everybody's weighing in because ev everybody cares. And everybody wants to express their thoughts on the situation, which is how you see all those thoughts pour out on social media, all the thoughts for him right now. And until you know how he's doing, it doesn't even make sense to talk about how and when they can resume this football game. I no agree. It matters I, most of all. Yeah. I, to I totally agree. And, and frankly, it, it doesn't make any sense to talk about what it, I mean, I get that this is what we do. People see it and say it looks like this. It could have been that. Well, I'm, I, all I've been trying to do since we've come on is tell you what we know, and, and yeah, that's, of the, that's the best that any of us can do, yeah. is share what we know as we know it. Go ahead, Jeff, one last thought. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there will be, so now everybody's getting to know Jamar Hamlin on social media in a way that they didn't know him before. There are people that knew him, but not like not the way they do right now. There is a toy drive that he initiated where his goal was to raise $2,500, and tonight I think that total is over $750,000 as we speak because people are pulling from and want to do what they can to support him and his friends and family they are desperate to reach out and pull this man through and hope that he's okay from this situation that was chilling and scary and frightening for everybody who watched it unfold on abc it's one of those things that you always remember seeing on national tv and you just pray that the young man is going to be okay yeah, let's hope that this is that, that there's some positive news at some point here. Adam Schefter, I uh, appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. We have this statement from the National Football League Players Association, the NFLPA, and everyone in our community is praying for DeMar Hamlin. We have been in touch with the Bills and Bengals players and with the NFL. The only thing that matters at this moment is DeMar's health and well-being. Lisa Salters joins us once again there from the stadium in Cincinnati. Uh, what can you share with us since you, we last spoke? Any information that, uh, that you've been able to gather? Not much, Scott. Uh, the Bills players are, uh, have been coming out of the locker room after having showered and put their street clothes back on. Uh, so far, it doesn't appear that their buses have arrived, so they're just kind of mingling out there by the locker room not really doing much of anything just kind of talking to each other eating what little bit of food is around um but as you can imagine they're they're still processing this like like all of us are uh and i was just thinking about this that you know it's just three hours ago scott that like you said earlier we were you know looking forward to kickoff this was going to be the you know the, the game of the year for of us. Course. We were so looking forward to this matchup, and then everything changed like that. Uh, just imagine how these players are feeling with all the hype surrounding this game, leading up to it. They're all fired up, ready to go, and to 